Hello everyone. Welcome to Edupedia World Videos. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss textbook questions. So, our question number one is that you had been provided with two test tubes. One of them contains distilled water and the other contains an acid solution. So, uh, suppose this is our test tube number one and this is test tube number two. First test tube contains distilled water and the second one contains acid solution. So, how will you find which of the test tube contains water without tasting the contents of the test tubes. So the solution is drop of blue litmus solution is added to each test tube. Blue litmus solution. is added to both of the test tubes. In one test tube the color of the solution changes to red and in the other test tube the color of the solution does not turn red. The solution in the test tube which does not turn red on addition of one drop of blue litmus solution contains water. So color not changed. So it contains water. And the solution of the in the test tube which turns red on addition of one drop of blue litmus solutions contains an acid solution. And when the uh, color of the uh, solution changes to red, it means acid solution is in the test tube. So by adding blue litmus solution, we can differentiate between the two uh, solutions in the test tubes. Now coming to question number 2. Question number 2 says Why does dry HCl gas does not change color of dry blue litmus paper? Dry HCl gas does not change color of dry blue litmus paper. Dry HCl gas does not undergo dissociation to H positive and Cl negative ions because HCl is a covalent bond. It's a covalent molecule. The dissociation reaction is like this, HCl, it will dissociate into H positive and Cl negative. This dissociation reaction cannot occur in the absence of water. This is because the highly concentrated positive charge of H positive ion would, would join back with the chloride ion to get back the lost electron and to reform the HCl molecule. Since H positive ion is not present in HCl gas, the color of the blue litmus paper does not change in contact with dry HCl gas. Now coming to question number 3. Why do HCl HNO3 etc. show acidic character in aqueous solution. They show acidic character in, as in aqueous solution while solution compounds like C2H5OH it's an alcohol and glucose do not show acidic character. The reason is HCl 
and HNO3 produce H positive ions. They produce H positive ions in aqueous solution which is responsible for their acidic character. H positive ion is responsible for the acidic character of acids such as HCl and HNO3. It, they dissociate like this HCl. It will dissociate into H positive and Cl negative. All of them are in aqueous form. Same case with HNO3, H positive and NO3 negative. All of them are in aqueous form. While alcohol that is C2H5OH and glucose are covalent compounds and they do not undergo dissociation in aqueous solution. This is evident from the fact that their aqueous solution do not conduct electricity. Hence the aqueous solutions of alcohol and glucose does not show acidic character even though they contain hydrogen atoms. Now next question. Why does an aqueous solution of an acid conduct electricity? Aqueous solution of acid conduct electricity. Acids undergo dissociation in aqueous solution to form H positive ions. When electricity is passed, through an aqueous solution of an acid, suppose HCl. It will dissociate into H positive and Cl negative and all of them are in aqueous form. The H positive ions reach the cathode and each H positive ion picks up one electron from the cathode to form hydrogen gas. Hence an aqueous solution of an acid conducts electricity. Now the next question. What effect does the concentration of H positive ion has on the acidic nature of the solution? Concentration of H positive ion. How does it affects the acidic nature of the solution. A decrease in the concentration of H positive ions in solution is indicative of less acidic nature of the solution. If H positive ion concentration is low, it means the solution is less acidic while an increase in H positive ion concentration in solution is indicative of more acidic nature of the solution. Now next question. While diluting an acid, why it is recommended that acid should be added to water and not water to the acid. It is recommended that acid should be added to water, not water to acid for di diluting an acid because mixing of an acid with water is an exothermic reaction. When concentrated H2SO4 or concentrated HNO3 is mixed with water, a large amount of heat is evolved. We know that in exothermic reaction, heat is evolved. And the result of splashing of water occurs. Splashing of water occurs. And the glass container may break due to excessive localized heating. Hence, 
while diluting concentrated acid it is recommended that acid should be added to water in small lots and not water to the acid the chemical reaction which occur is H2SO4 which is liquid when water is added for diluting it it will form H3O positive and SO4 to negative plus heat is also evolved they are in aqueous form now coming to the next question name the acids present in the following food stuffs which attribute a sour taste to them lemon juice vinegar so in lemon juice which acid is there citric acid in vinegar we all use vinegar acetic acid is there in sour milk lactic acid is there now thanks for watching adipedia world videos